Hi, Erwan from Motion VFX. In this video, I will give you a complete overview of the brand new plugin from Motion VFX, Mfim Look. Mfim Look is an all in one solution which will add cinematic look to your production. So let's start with a new clip. This one is a log file with no effect applied on it. In order to apply Mfim Look, you will have to go to the FX library and select your Mfim Look effect. The first one is a default one without any preset. But as usual with Motion VFX, there is a long list of presets to start faster. In fact, there are 60 presets in total. In order to preview the preset on your clip, you just have to select the preset and see the result in the viewer. If you want to apply the effect, you have two choices. First, you can drag and drop the preset on the top of the clip, or you can just double click on it. As soon as the preset is applied, a floating palette is showing up inside the viewer. This floating palette is on the left. I can move it and change its position inside the viewer. The floating palette contains 11 effects directly available from the viewer. You have the white balance, the levels, the basic adjustment, the off-screen flare, the 3D lookup table. You have also the chromatic aberration, the lens distortion, the lens blur. You can add film grain, vignette effect, and letterbox. On the left of each effect icon, you will find a little square which will enable or disable the effect. So you can click on it to activate or deactivate the letterbox, or for example, the vignette effect directly from the floating palette. If you click directly on the effect icon, the icon will become blue and the on-screen control will appear inside the viewer. In this case, I can move directly from the viewer the flare. I can change the scale. I can adjust more parameters like the intensity. I can increase or decrease the intensity of the flare. I can also adjust the hue to change the color of the flare. In between these two parameters, there are four squares which will give me access to the flare preset library. So I can switch directly to another preset and see the result directly inside the viewer. Each preset can be customized. You can adapt each flare to your different project. If you need more complex and advanced lens flare, you can use Mflare 2 in conjunction of Mfim Block. You can buy Mflare 2 directly from the preset library by clicking on the Mflare 2 cart. It will bring you directly to the website of Mflare 2. If I come back to my shot, as you can see, some effects are not enabled. The icons are in dark gray. I can, for example, modify the white balance of the clip. If I clip directly on the icon, it will enable the white balance. When you activate the white balance, Mfim Look will disable all the effects in order to see the right color of the pixel. I can use the eyedropper to select the right pixel. By using the levels, I can adjust the black, the gamma, and the white of my shot. So I can play with the parameters directly from the viewer. I can add a chromatic aberration effect. I can adjust the range, the softness, and the intensity. So the effect is more visible on the window of the top right of the screen. I can add some film grain and play with the size parameters, the color noise and the intensity. The letterbox effect is very easy to use inside the viewer as there are magnetic guidelines which will help you to find the right aspect ratio for the letterbox. As you can see, I've totally customized the preset and I would like to save it in order to use it again on other shots or later on on different projects. To save it, you just have to open the inspector where you can find all the parameters we already use, but also many more for advanced work. To get the inspector with the full height of the interface, you just have to double click on the inspector name area and you will switch to the full height. So in order to save my preset setup, I just have to click on save preset button. I just have to enter a name for my preset. I will save it as dance, for example, and I will create a new category as my look where I can save all my presets. So I can select my own category to only display my presets inside my library. For the preset you like the most, you can click on the little star on the top right for your own preset, but also for the other presets. And to display your favorite preset, you just have to click on the star near the category pop-up menu. You can also search preset by name by tapping the name of the preset you are looking for in the text field and the search engine will automatically display the right preset. 
with the inspector, you have a direct access to MFIMLOG preset. You don't have to go back to the effect library. Directly from the floating palette, you can switch to another preset. We've just seen that we can load a preset, modify it and save it as a new preset. So let's start from scratch and create our own effect with MFIM block for this shot. I will go back to my library effect and apply the default MFIM block effect on my clip. As you can see on the floating palette, there is no effect activated. All are in dark gray. On the inspector panel, I've got two parameters, show clipping and show OSC. That can be on or off position. Show OSC means on-screen control, so you can decide to remove all the on-screen control inside the viewer. Show clipping, I will tell you more about in a few minutes. First thing first, there is one point very important to understand inside MFIM look. The first three parameters, convert to right 709, white balance and levels, are dedicated for the color correction. As each clips are unique from the others, these three parameters are not saved inside the preset. The convert to Rec709 parameter gives you the possibility to change the color space from your clip to Rec709 by using Camera LUT. You can access to many Camera LUTs directly from the pop-up menu. The list is quite complete with Blackmagic Camera, Sony, Panasonic, RED, etc. In this case, I will choose the Blackmagic 4K Film V1. Then I can do the white balance of my shot. As I've shown you before, you can use the eyedropper to select the white pixel in your shot. As soon as it is enabled, MFMLock will disable all the effects in order to choose the right pixel with the right value on your source file. Here I will select the pixel from the back window. In the case you don't have any white pixel in your shot, you can use the color wheel by clicking on the color square and adjust your white balance. You can also use the RGB values by double clicking on the white balance color parameter to get access to the RGB values. One very nice detail about MFIM look is when you are adjusting several parameters and moving from one parameter to another one using the floating palette. When you click on one parameter inside the floating palette, MFIM look will update the inspector automatically to show you the right parameters on the top of the inspector. So now I can adjust the levels. To be more accurate, I will display my view scopes. Here I can see the dynamic of my signal. First, I will enable the levels, and now I can adjust the various parameters like exposure, contrast, gamma. To start, you can use the auto levels button to have an automatic correction. In order to be sure that I'm not clipping the signal, I can use the show clipping parameter. As soon as this one is enabled, you can see that we have some blue and peak value on the video. The blue value indicates that some black are crushed and the pink values indicate that the white values are clipped. So you can readjust directly inside the viewer with the black, gamma and the white parameters to get rid of the clip value. So I don't need anymore to use a videoscope to check if my signal is right or not. A very useful feature to be sure you are not going too far away with your exposure and contrast value. Next, I will play with the basic adjustment parameters where you can adjust the color temperature, the vibrance, the saturation, and the sharpness parameters. So you can give a cooler or warmer atmosphere on your shot. You can work directly from the inspector or directly inside the viewer, where you can adjust the color temperature and the saturation. Here I would like to have a cooler atmosphere, so more bluish, but at the same time more saturated and more vibrant colors. The sharpness parameters can add details inside your shot by adding contrast on the edge of the objects. Next, I will add some off-screen flare. I enable it. As we've seen before, we have access to a flare preset library where you can find several flares by clicking and selecting the flare. You can apply it directly inside the viewer. So I can select this one or this one, for example, and see all the changes. I will go back on the top of the list and select the first one. So officially it's an off-screen flare, but I will use the on-screen control to move it directly inside the window like this. The problem is that the flare doesn't follow the camera motion, so I will add some keyframe to fix the flare on the window. Before, I will adjust some parameters to customize the preset for my clip. So I can adjust the intensity, the hue, the saturation and the scale. Concerning the flare position, I have two choices, automatic or manual. 
Automatic position will use the on-screen control parameters to animate the flare with the direction of the arrow and the speed of the motion will be determined by the length of the arrow. In this case, I will use the manual position as I need the flare to be fixed on the border of the window. I will add a keyframe position at the first frame, then on the last frame, and I will look how it reacts. I will add more keyframe to have a solid and constant position. So now I've got a good position, I will go further to customize the flare by using the streak settings. You can change the color, play with the brightness, the gamma, change the size of the streaks with a scale X and Y. You can add details or blur the streaks with the smoothness parameters. In order to finish and polish my flare effect, I will use the flicker settings. As the camera is moving, the flicker effect will give a brightness animation which will add realism to my effect. I can adjust the intensity, the speed and the noisiness. The nice thing with MFIM Look is that I can play the clip and at the same time I can adjust the flicker parameters in real time. Next, I will add a 3D lookup table to polish the overall effect. By default, I've got access to many LUTs inside the LUT preset library. By clicking on it, you can apply the LUT you want, so it's very easy and fast to test which LUT is the best for your clip. If you need more LUT, or if you like to add your own LUT, you can import LUTs from the Import button, but you can also buy packs of LUTs from Motion VFX. You just have to click on the cart icon. It will bring you to the right web pages on the Motion VFX website. If you are using the free plugin from Motion VFX MLUT, and if you already created your own MLUT library with multiple LUTs from PAX or from other companies, you can import directly all your MLUT library inside MFM Look with one click. To do so, just click on MLUT button. In this case, I will choose a LUT from Instapack. I can select this one or this one. When the LUT is applied, I can adjust the intensity of the LUT in order to have the right mix for my look. Next, I will add some chromatic aberration. I just click on Enable to activate it. The chromatic aberration will give me a more natural look, less digital. It will split the RGB values. We can see the result in the highlights, like the window on the top right of the shot. You can play with the intensity the range, the softness parameters inside the inspector, but also directly inside the viewer. Like all the parameters inside MFIM Lock, all the parameters can be animated with keyframes. The following effect is the lens distortion. The effect simulates a barrel of distortion from the optics, like anamorphic lenses. By playing with the intensity parameter, you can add or remove distortion. You can create some fisheye effect, for example, in this case, I won't add much distortion as I want to keep the perspective effect of my shot. So I put the intensity to zero. The lens blur effect is very useful as it can help you to create several looks. By adding blur on your shot, you're also focusing the eye of your viewer to one point. In this case, I would like to focus on the dancer and at the same time add more perspective to my shot. So outside the circle, I will add some blur. Meanwhile, inside the circle, everything stays sharp. By adjusting the intensity, the range, the gain, and the threshold, you can control exactly the amount of blur and its spread. In order to accentuate the perspective, I will use the focus mask settings, which will allow me to change the aspect ratio of the effect and be more vertical than circle. This kind of aspect ratio will be very useful to create tilt shift effects. So pushing the intensity will add more blur on the walls, If you want to invert the effect, just use the invert focus parameter. With invert on, I can show you that you have the choice between two modes concerning the bokeh render. You can use the default blurry render or the bokeh render. In order to show you the bokeh render will push the intensity. Now you can see the effect and by adjusting the bokeh sides, I can increase or decrease the number of sides for each bokeh. Now I can switch back the blur from inside to outside and check the result. To harmonize all the effects, I will add some grain over all these effects. I can adjust several parameters like the intensity, the size, the granularity and the color noise for the animation of the grain. The lumen influence is really important as it will remove the grain in the highlight like in reality. If you put it to zero, the grain will be uniform on all the shots. 
Now I can add some vignette effects to focus my subject as always. By default, it's quite strong. So you can adjust the intensity and play with the range and the softness inside the inspector or inside the viewer with the on-screen control. The last effect is a letterbox effect. I will enable it. And as I've mentioned before, the letterbox effects come with several presets for the different kind of letterbox you can find. First, you can select if you want an horizontal or vertical letterbox. Vertical can be very useful for social networks or if you want to have a square project, for example. In horizontal mode, you have 10 presets like Cinemascope or Panavision or more. And as I've mentioned before, you can adjust them directly inside the viewer. Because of the magnetic guidelines, it's very easy to find the right size. If you want to adjust the content inside your letterbox, you can change the offset position of your clip directly inside the viewer or inside the inspector. I'm done with my look. I would like to save it as I would like also to use it to another shot or maybe in future projects. So I go on the top of the effect panel and click on the save preset button. I will save it as dance 2 and select my category and my look. Here the before and after M-Film looked effect. The changes are quite drastic. If you need more information concerning M-Film look, I invite you to go to motionvfx.com where you can find dedicated web page and where you can download the free trial version, find more tutorials and get tips and tricks.